Hi there. Uh, we're going to talk a little about the starting and charging system on a, a diesel-powered walk-behind tractor here. So this is a this particular model is a BCS 749 uh, with an 11 horsepower diesel on it, uh, Kohler diesel, which is made by Lombardini. Uh, all these diesel engines that are sold on the various tractors we offer, Grillo, BCS, whatever, uh, typically all electric start. So you've got a key switch and you've got a battery, you've got a starter motor, you've got a solenoid, and you've got a voltage regulator. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to bring the camera around this way, we'll talk about some of these various functions. So the key switch on the BCS machines is mounted up here on most of them. There are a few BCS models that will have the key switch mounted kind of right down in this area here. It would be a little box mounted right here with a key switch on it. The Grillo tractors typically have the key box here as well. Um, on, the key on the key box, you will always have either one or more warning lights. The BCS models just have a single warning light here. This is a battery charge indicator light. So if I turn the key to the on position with the, bat with the engine not running, you see this light come on. The, the light comes on when the alternator is not charging the battery, which is, which is correct. This is, this is telling us the right thing now. It's telling us the alternator has failed. That is, the charging system has failed because the charging system is activated. We've turned the switch on, but there's no juice coming from the alternator to charge the battery. So this thing's telling us the truth. Now, if I start the engine, this light should go out as soon as the engine comes up to speed because the alternator starts charging the battery. We will do that. Turn this thing on. Well, the engine is cold natured. It's cold out here. One more time. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off. Notice as soon as it turns off, the light turns back on. Now on a key switch panel that's mounted up front here, uh, there's, a, there's an A light that does the same thing. The A light and the battery light are identical. They're both alternator failure lights. If I turn the key off, this shuts this off. This, is, this light being here is why it's very important on the diesel engine that when you shut the engine off, you have to come down here and turn the key off because the key does not shut off the engine on a diesel. The, the electrical system only starts it, it doesn't shut it off. So you have to shut it off with a manual kill switch and then come down here and shut your key off, otherwise that light's gonna run your battery down. So, we're also gonna talk about <coughs> what can possibly happen with a starting and charging system that, uh, that fails in terms of not starting the engine. When you, when you turn the key to the start position, the first thing that happens is juice from the battery goes to this solenoid here. This is the solenoid on the starter motor. The solenoid's job is two things. Number one, it kicks a gear out. There's a gear mounted right in here, and it, it shoves this gear out uh, to engage with the flywheel of the engine. When the gear is fully engaged, the, the solenoid itself, which is like a little plunger inside this cavity, bottoms out at the end of this thing and actually connects the battery incoming lead with a lead here that drives the starter motor. So once the gear is fully engaged, clunk, this thing makes contact and actually puts power to the motor part of it to turn the motor and actually start the engine. So a common failure is that in high dust applications, uh, which walk behind tractors are unfortunately subject to a lot because of soil working, uh, the cooling air that's sucking air in the front of the engine to cool the engine down also sucks in dirt, and some of that dirt ends up in the solenoid, and it will eventually stop that plunger from working. So in this case, you would turn the key, and nothing happens. You might hear a little bit of a clunk, you might not hear anything at all, and maybe if you turn the key three or four times or tap on the starter motor a little bit, it'll start because it vibrates a little of the dirt around in there. If that's the case, if you experience that, stop, remove the solenoid and clean the dirt out. If you continue trying to use it with the solenoid sort of half working, you're gonna overheat the coils in the solenoid and burn it out. 
Um, but a quick way to troubleshoot what's going on with your starting system is if, if you're having difficulties starting it with the key, that is you turn the key, nothing happens, you gotta figure out what's the problem. Is it the solenoid? Is it the starter motor? Or could it be your key switch or your wiring connecting it all together? Because people obviously run these things in situations, for example, brush mowing, where you may pull some wires off going through some heavy brush. So it's, this is important for, uh, you know, figure out how to, how to troubleshoot the thing. I'm going to pull this rubber boot back off of here a little bit and expose this hot lead here. That lead has always got 12 volts to it. This is the bottom lead on the solenoid because that's the lead that's going directly up to the hot side of the battery, the positive side of the battery. So that's got 12 volts to it. So, excuse me, I've accidentally turned on my phone. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, let's, let's pretend that this thing uh, wasn't working when I turned the key. So what I want to figure out is how far the voltage is getting and what the voltage is doing. So I know well, I know right now that this is a good battery. Now, if you don't know that you've got a good battery, you can either put a new battery on it, put your battery on a charger or whatever. But once you're sure that you've got a good battery on it, you can actually manually cross over this lead, which is 12 volts, to this lead up here. You might want to position. This is the lead that goes directly up to the starter motor. You can see there's kind of a copper colored wire here that's permanently uh, mounted to it. And that, that lead brings the 12 volts up the copper wire directly into the starter motor part. That's the part that spins the motor. So if I cross over those two leads with an old screwdriver that I don't care about and make sure it has a good insulated handle on it because I don't want to be zapped here. I'll get some sparks here, but what we'll hear is if, if this battery is good and this starter motor is still functioning right, uh, we're going to hear the motor whirr. It's going to whizz, but it's not going to turn the engine because we haven't engaged the solenoid part of it. We're just bypassing the solenoid at this point. So I've got power here. Ah, can't get a good angle. There we go, we heard the motor go, whirr. Okay, so the starter motor is working fine. Now, we know the starter motor is working, so we wanna see if the solenoid is working. And I'm, so I'm gonna cross my screwdriver, I'm gonna catch this one here again, and I'm gonna reach up here and I'm gonna get this small terminal right here. This is the terminal where the power usually gets carried in from the key to engage the start or to engage the solenoid. So I'm going to manually do this. I'm going to manually cross these two over without the key. Coming up through here. And it works. The motor actually cranked, which means the solenoid kicked in the starter motor and then engaged the starter. I'm going to do that one more time. I got to keep a good contact on it. Now it's not starting because the engine kill switch up on the handlebars is off, but I know this starter motor and solenoid are working properly. So in this case, if I were experiencing uh, the key not doing what I just did manually, then the problem is either with the key switch or the wiring in between. Now, if either of those functions didn't work, for example, if the first, if the first test didn't work, I would know that the starter motor is actually bad. If the second test doesn't work, I know that the solenoid is bad. So, and we have on our website complete instructions for removal of the starter motor and removal of the solenoid for cleaning it all out. And uh, they can also be sent in here for service if you take them off. And we do have rebuilt starters and solenoids available. So, 